So I spent some time fumbling around in Material X, so you don't need to. And here's what you must know if you're going to go into Material X. By the end of this video, you're gonna know when to use Material X and when to use maybe our beloved Vex shaders. Finally, please support this channel and hit the like, subscribe, and smash that bell um, as that will really help support this channel. And, or if you prefer, well, you can sign up for my insider newsletter uh, with the links provided in the description below so you get notified whenever there's new content that comes out on this channel. What is Material X and why should you care? So Material X is a standard for representing shaders and materials, much like how FBX, OBJ, Alembic is for geometry. I know, I just said standard and I gave you three different formats and there's probably a lot more than that too. So, so much for standards. Well, back at Material X, it really is an attempt to solve the problem that we currently have of there being no good way to transfer materials and shaders across software packages and renderers, at least until Material X came about. Material X is started by ILM and is now open sourced and is supported and co-developed by many industry leaders, including Autodesk, uh, Pixar, Adobe Substance, and of course, SideFX Houdini. Now, why should you care? Well, because Karma CPU and Karma XPU right now supports Material X with Houdini 19. And in particular, Karma XPU will never support our beloved usual VEX shaders and Material X is probably going to be the standard for Karma XPU uh, moving into the future and maybe even Karma in general. Um, also, Software like Substance Designer, Arnold, and Renderman, as they all they already have support for Material X, and as more and more of these softwares come on board and support Material X, it's going to be increasingly cool that Material X can sort of transfer across software packages seamlessly to design a material in one package and not have to redesign it for another renderer is definitely much effort saved. So let's talk about what got me fumbling into Material X and Karma XPU. Mainly because I was trying to re-render an old project that I started in Mantra a while back and I was wanting to render it in 8K in with Karma XPU because that seemed like the perfect candidate, right? And in particular, this was the project that I am trying to render in 8K with Karma XPU. But the caveat is Karma XPU is in alpha. So fumbling and things not working is sort of to be expected. And this video is not about complaining about Karma XPU or Material X at all. It's about helping others. So maybe you fumble a little less. So I already mentioned it, but Material X is the future of Karma XPU and potentially Karma in general. So the first thing is if you want to use Karma XPU, you want to use Material X to shade it. And Material X is the way to go. While the principal shader works with Karma in general, but it is to my understanding actually it converts this VEX shader down into what is sort of the equivalent of a USD preview surface, which is much more limited. So you really have, uh, if you want to go Karma XPU, the way to go is the Material X materials. Variables in the, between the Material X nodes, some of those parameters don't update uh, in the viewport occasionally that happens. So there's still a little bit of bugs in terms of responsiveness of authoring your shaders and then having those changes apply 
on your viewport. But nothing that a little restart rendering will not help uh, when you do that on the viewport with Karma. So what are the issues are you finding uh, with Karma CPU that it does not yet support? Um, besides obviously the lack of subsurface scattering support, please let me know in the comments below. Love to hear what you guys are experiencing. Again, uh, to be fair, I'm still on just the latest production build and I haven't downloaded any of the latest daily builds yet. So I'm on uh, 19.0.383 and you know, there is already a 0.44 something release. So I should probably try it out with the latest daily build and probably a bunch of stuff would already be fixed. So if you're looking for a community of like-minded FXTDs, Houdini, tech artists, aspiring ones who you want to hang out with each other, help each other out, celebrate each other's successes, please check out the Effective community at nelsonlim.com slash effective. And I hope to see you there. So back to Material X. When using Material X, you want to definitely make use of the Material X standard surface. This is sort of your Uber shader and it's like the Vex principal shader that's based on the Disney principal shader. Uh, but this standard surface is sort of based more on what Autodesk, Maya and Arnold have been have a white paper on called for the standard surface. And it represents, some people say 90%, some people say 99% of materials in the world, but it represents a lot of materials in the world. Uh, you can see it has your standard base color, which is what the albedo sometimes people call it, what your color is, and then specular highlights, transmission that can represent glass, water, um, type effects where light goes through, subsurface scattering for skin, for um, plastic like Lego pieces uh, where light is able to sort of shine through and bounce around underneath, sheen for material like cloth, uh, coats for car paint where there's an extra layer of coating on top, thin film uh, is great for like bubbles or iridescent insect coating. Uh, emission, obviously, uh, it emits light of a specific color of its own. And then geometry, there's your usual opacity, uh, normal for normal maps and tangent inputs. And all this is very, very familiar, especially if you use Arnold. Uh, it's very, very similar to the Arnold standard surface shader. It follows it very closely. So if you've used it, you'll find this super familiar. Now Material X will let you allow you to sort of Lego around and create your own custom shaders. You don't have to use this standard shader of, or this Uber shader, standard surface Uber shader. You can mix and match different shading lobes and get what you want. But I suspect that's not what most of you will be doing. And probably there's going to be more stuff in Karma XPU that doesn't support all of the different shader lobes. So if you're get, getting into Karma XPU, the number one shader to check out is the Karma, is the Material X standard surface. So really, when should you use Material X? Well, really, whatever you would usually use the VEX principal shader for, I think that should be sort of your default shader to explore, which is the Material X standard surface. You should use that sort of by, I think by default, even if you're using Karma CPU. Uh, and obviously if you're using Karma XPU, then Material X is the only thing you can use. So highly recommend Material X standard surface shader as sort of the default thing that you would start off using instead of the principal shader. But that being said, Material X doesn't do a lot of procedural no noises uh, to create more complex looking stuff. And I'll show you just what kind of 
you know, procedural noise notes they have right now. As of the moment, Material X only has these limited sort of noise notes where you have the cell noise, there's 2D, 3D, and this is the kind of the result you get. And then there's a noise 3D node, which is, this is what you get. And we have our fractal, again, gives you that fractal noise and a whirly noise 3D. So not a lot of options there uh, available to us compared to Vex shaders where you can use like a turbulent noise, you can use a unified noise, you can use anti-alias noise. There's a lot of noise options that are available for us in Vex shaders at the moment. So because of that, I had to revert back to Karma CPU uh, for my renders because I could not recreate my shader network of turbulent and unified noise displacement as well as sort of layer mixing uh, between two different shaders in Material X. Uh, I'm sure there's probably a way you can mix shaders in Material X and maybe we'll cover that in the future, but definitely not with the you know, a lot of interesting types of noises that you could use with it. So that being said, if you need more complex Houdini noises uh, for your rendering purposes, for your shaders, well, go back to Vex shaders like uh, the principal shader as well as all of the Vex shader noises that come with it and render in Karma CPU for that added boost in rendering. But you can still do a lot with Material X, so I wouldn't discount it right away. And for most of the things, for example, that you would maybe bring in a mega scans type photo scan asset and assign, you know, materials and do material layering, those are things that you can pretty much do with the Material X standard surface and a bunch of Material X shaders. So there's still a lot that you can do. It's just that in my particular case, my material was highly reliant on a bunch of really uh, you know, more sophisticated noise uh, VEX nodes that are available in Houdini and I could only use Karma CPU to render and not Karma XPU. So if this has been helpful to you, please remember to hit the like, subscribe, smash that bell, support the channel. And if you're interested in more videos like this, such as how to get into Karma, rendering, do check out the live stream video that I had uh, a while back and I included in the description or in the title cards and title cards uh, where you can check out how to get really into comma rendering, like the easiest ways to get into it. And stay tuned for more videos in the future and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.